Hi everyone, welcome to today's video on describing and performing dilations. So as you can see in the flowchart, we are in our transformations unit, right? So we're thinking about transformations and we've already learned all about rigid transformations, which are transformations where the pre-image and the image are congruent or they're the same shape and size. Okay, so examples of rigid transformations are translations, reflections, and rotations, which we've all mastered. So now we're talking about non-rigid transformations. These are transformations where the size and or the shape of the figure changes. For us, we're really just going to be dealing with um, when the size of the figure changes, and that's a type of rigid transformation called dilations. It's the last type of transformation we'll learn about in eighth grade. There are other types of non-rigid transformations, but in order to deal with them, you need a lot of higher algebra skills, so you won't see that until late high school. Okay. So dilations are transformations that result in an image with the same shape, meaning it has the same angles, and the same orientation, meaning it's like facing the same direction, um, as the pre-image, but different side lengths. So in other words, it's the same shape, but a different size. Okay, so when we dilate a shape, we're resizing the shape. We're either making it bigger, and that's called an enlargement, or we're making it smaller, and that's called a reduction. Um, and we'll be dealing with those a little bit more technically, mathematically, by looking at the scale factor. Okay, so when we have a scale factor that is greater than one, our shape is going to get bigger. Okay, so that's what we have in this picture over here to the right. We have A, B, C, D. That is our pre-image. And then it is getting dilated um, about the origin by a scale factor of two. So we're going to look at one example of performing a dilation and one example of describing a dilation. So for our first example, we're going to talk about performing dilations. In this case, we're asked to dilate quadrilateral MATH with a center 0, 0 and a scale factor of 2. So our step one, we're going to write the coordinate directions to get from the center of dilation to each point. Okay. So in this case, they tell us that our center of dilation is the origin 0, 0. So we'll just go one point at a time. Um, we'll start with M. Okay, to get from the origin to M, I would go up one, two units, and then left one, two units. So for M, it's going to be up two, left two. Doesn't matter which of those I state first. All right, then we'll do the same thing for A. So to get to A, I just need to go up two, up one, two. So to get to T, same idea, I'm starting at the origin, I just have to go down one to get to T. And then same idea for H, I'm starting at the origin and I need to go down one, then I need to go left one, two. Okay, so down one and then left two. So those are currently like the coordinate directions to get from the center of dilation to each point. Now if I wanna dilate this shape with a scale factor of two, I'm going to multiply those directions by the scale factor, okay? And that's gonna get me my image of those points, the new points. So to get M prime then, instead of going up two, I'm going to multiply by my scale factor of two. So instead of going up two, I'm going to go up two times two, which of course is four. Okay, and instead of going left two, I'm gonna multiply that by my scale factor of two, and thus I will go left four. Okay, I'll do the same thing for my other points. For A prime, I was originally going up two. I need to multiply by my scale factor of two. So to get A prime, instead of going up two, I'm gonna go up four. Okay, for T prime, same idea. I'm originally going down one. Instead of going down one, I multiply that directional distance from um, by the scale factor of two, and instead I go down two, because one times two is two. And lastly, to get H prime, I was originally going down one, I multiplied by my scale factor of two, and instead I'm gonna go down two, and I was originally going left two times two, I'm gonna go left four instead. Okay, so I'm taking um, my coordinate directions, right? How much am I moving up, down, left, or right? Multiplying those by my scale factor to get the new directions I'm gonna follow to get my image, my dilated image. 
Okay, and then step three is just following these new directions um, from the center to plot the image of each point. So we'll start with M. M was originally two up and two left from the origin. Instead, we have to go up four and left four. So up one, two, three, four, left one, two, three, four. That's going to be M prime, the dilated image of M. Okay, we do the same thing for A. A, I'm supposed to go up four. So up one, two, three, four. And this is my image of A, A prime. Okay, again, same thing to get T prime. Instead of going down one, I'm supposed to go down two. And this will give me T prime. And lastly, to get H, instead of going my original down one and left two, I found out I need to go down two and left one, two, three, four. This is the image of H or H prime. Okay, and then lastly, I'm going to connect the points. And there we go, we have quadrilateral MATH with a center of zero, zero, or the origin, and a scale factor of two. We did that dilation, and we got this new rectangle, the image of the original quadrilateral. Now we can notice some things about dilations. Originally, the length of MH was three units. If we count down the, the new length, of m prime h prime is six units, okay? That makes sense. When we're thinking about our scale factor, it's always gonna end up being this ratio of the image side length, six, to the pre-image side length for any corresponding side length. Six divided by three is two, okay? Ultimately, we're looking at a quadrilateral that is twice as big as the original, um, and it's like twice as big from the center, like it grows out of that center. Awesome, great job everyone. And now we have a describing dilations example. Describe the dilation that maps P, Q, R, S to P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime. So to describe a dilation like we kind of just saw, we're going to need a center and a scale factor. All right, so first let's start with the center. For most of what we're gonna do together, the center will be the origin, but it doesn't need to be. Generally speaking, to find um, the center of dilation, we're gonna take corresponding points and draw a straight line that connects them. You're gonna do that for each pair of corresponding points and they should all meet at one point and that's gonna be your center. So for example, if I take P and P prime and I connect them, I'd get you know, that line. If I take Q and Q prime and I connect them, I'm gonna get that line. S and S prime, I connect them, I get that line. And R and R prime, I connect them and I get that line. So we can see that the origin is right in the middle. It's the only point that all four of those lines share. So we know then it's gonna be the center of dilation. And then we just need to figure out what the scale factor is. Okay, so for the scale factor, there's a few ways of doing it. Um, the scale factor is defined as the ratio of the length in the image to the corresponding length in the pre-image for any given side length, right? So that's what we talked about briefly before. So like if I take the image, Q prime R prime, this is a length of three. And then the pre-image, Q R, that has a length of six. Okay, we wanna take the ratio of the length of Q prime R prime here divided by the length of Q R because Q prime R prime is the image and QR is the corresponding pre-image. Okay, the length of Q prime R prime is three. The length of QR is six. So that means the scale factor is three, six, or that simplifies to one half. Okay, so the scale factor here will be one half. Sometimes though, it'll be a challenge to find the length of any of the side lengths, because in this case, right, it's pretty easy because there's these horizontal and vertical side lengths. But if all of our side lengths looked like PQ or PS, you can see those are on a diagonal. We can't easily figure out the length of that line. So we can also use this approach um, with the directional distances like we do in the performing dilation. Think back to the idea of a factor, right? A factor is something you multiply by. So we're trying to figure out what do we multiply by to get from the pre-image to the image, right? So in this case, for the pre-image, it was right for up to. What number could we multiply those directional distances by to get to right two and up one? 
4 times 1 half is equal to 2, and uh, 2 times 1 half is equal to 1. So that's why our scale factor is 1 half. Okay, and then one last note, this is an example of what we call a reduction because the pre-image is bigger than the image. So we started that blue pre-image and then our image is smaller. So it's getting smaller, it's reducing in size, it gets smaller and the scale factor is between zero and one. Um, but in the example that we did ourselves, we had a scale factor of two and this was an example of an enlargement. Enlargement means it gets large, it gets bigger. Um, our original shape, M-A-T-H, was smaller than our image. Okay, so it got bigger, and we had a scale factor that was greater than one, which is always going to tell us we have an enlargement. Okay, awesome, great job, everyone.